Okay. So I am uh, speaking with Kit Miyamoto, who is uh, an engineer who specializes in earthquake resilience, making sure communities and structures don't fall down in places where there is high hazard, uh, from, there's an implicit hazard. I, I think that's a good way to sum up what you do, but, but tell me what, what more you focus on. And, and I want to mention, of course, you're in the, you've just arrived in Kathmandu, right? Yeah, something like that. I'm a structural engineer. And the um, uh, past five years, essentially, I was in Haiti for the reconstruction of the country. And uh, New Zealand also, I was there for a couple of years. So that's basically what we do for the uh, uh, recovery, reconstruction. That's what we do as a structural engineer, engineering. So I, I arrived here yesterday after uh, 30 hours of an unbelievable crazy airplane ride, you know, over to Iran and uh, Afghanistan, place like that. And uh, it was it was chaos in the airport because uh, all the tourists who got stuck there, they want to fly out, and we want to fly in. So there's obviously natural traffic jam, and it was uh, it was kind of touching a girl. I was uh, talking to that the lady next to me, she was from B BBC, and uh, it was her third try in the last two days to get into the country. So, wow. But I'm here, and uh, uh, today I spent a day in Kathmandu itself and assess damage and uh, see, the, uh, see the scenery. So what's your impression of what fell down and what didn't? Well, the, uh, it's very interesting. The uh, Many tall buildings, even the modern structures, had uh, quite a bit of damage, actually. And also the uh, large temples, large ones, uh, big ones, they had, they had a lot of damage. But once come to the uh, shorter, smaller buildings, you don't see, uh, there are some damages, okay? But it's, it's actually uh, fairly limited, I, I thought. And I think part of it is, uh, Epicenter was almost uh, uh, 80, 80 kilometers away. It's almost, what, 50 miles out? So it's definitely a far distance earthquake. And this kind of reminds me of Chengdu. The Chengdu in uh, 2008 was kind of like that. The uh, Sichuan earthquake, it was 98. And Chengdu city itself, damage was somewhat limited because actually Epicenter was almost 60 miles away. So very kind of similar kind of things going on. But because of the far distance, the far distance earthquake tend to have the uh, uh, tend to affect the taller, so-called longer period of buildings tend to. So that's, that's why I think that uh, most of the damage concentrate in uh, uh, buildings with a high period, which means taller or bigger uh, buildings. So, so the limited losses within Kathmandu are likely a function of the fact that the power was, was uh, dissipated there uh, substantially. Uh, I, I think so. For the uh, most of the period, most of the frequency range seems to be much uh, attenuated quite, quite good. But also, the, uh, I think construction is, uh, I think it's okay, you know. I mean, uh, I went through the, some of the uh, uh, smaller construction sites, and I did see the, uh, the concrete, you know, frames with the good ductile details. It has the 135-degree ropes type spacings. And I know they use the Indian building code. And the Indian building code is, maybe it's not quite good as IBC, but they're actually decent, you know. So they have, I think, decent practice. So, but also, the, obviously, the, the older non ductile concrete structures, you know, same old story, they're really dangerous. There's just a lot of collapse because of many, many people died. Right. And, um, I mean, Kathmandu, we lost about 1,500 people, somewhere there, talking about 2.5 million people. But uh, so right now, death, death count is about 5,000, and it's belong to, and uh, closer to Epicenters, actually. And so we're going to be there in the next uh, few days to assess the uh, uh, so called closer to Epicenter. Yeah, well, that's and they have two earthquakes, you know. They have two earthquakes. First one's a Sunday at noon, about seven point nine, and I'm mean, a Saturday, uh, uh, Saturday here, and a Sunday, which is six point five near Chinese border, which also killed about twelve hundred people in the small towns up in the border. So yeah, um, and what I'm understanding, what I've been writing about the last couple of days, has been about issues that relate to structures and, and death counts in, in rural in the hinterlands. And it's pretty interesting. Um, Roger Billum was telling me that in my piece that just ran, uh, that there are so many factors that um, lead to having very high risk of collapse in, in some of these areas outside of the city. There's no, there's no wood, uh, among other things, uh, to tie buildings together. And so I don't know if you've kind of tracked that question. 
No, but uh, I'll go see there. See, yeah, it's a uh, uh, most of the buildings are made of a brick and a concrete or mm -hmm. stones. So in the countryside, obviously, tend to you know have a less engineering or less quality control. That's usually a tendency. But uh, I'll find out for you and I'll let you know. Yeah. But uh, estimated they lost uh, almost uh, somewhere in the fifty thousand to sixty thousand houses. So that would be a uh, pretty big issue for the reconstruction of the housing stock. Wow. And hopefully that the build build like better concept would be applied here, which would be I think. Yeah. But and uh, but one one thing I noticed about Nepal, though, I mean. Uh, I think engineers, uh, I, I, I thought they're pretty good here. And uh, uh, some of the, I mean, obviously I didn't talk to every engineer, but some of the engineers we work with and just kind of uh, going through their thought process and their attitude about earthquake engineering, I think they got the good basic done, you know. And um, I mean, this country, from a World Bank to USID, you know, they have been making quite a bit of investment for the uh, capacity building and risk management and so on. And uh, I can see that there are some certain results come from, come out from that. I really do. And do you think also in, in Kathmandu specifically that that's the case? Uh, I've heard that there some people were saying they did get the sense that preparedness really did matter as well, uh, not just sort of that it was weaker. Well, when I saw the ductile details in a fairly poor construction site, that is in kind of tells me, well, you know, I mean, doctoral detail is a sacred thing. It's the uh, the so-called last line of defense, almost. And uh, I think Can you that describe kind of what that means for the for the non-engineer. Oh, doctoral details essentially the uh, the column uh, column tend to concrete column tend to explode when the uh, uh, hit by seismic motion. But what happens is when you provide this tight tight this reinforcement tight spacing. Almost like a, as like, or well imagine a wine barrel having the steel straps. Imagine no street straps, or steel straps, for things explode, right? right? Essentially, the concrete columns uh, act exact almost same way. So the this steel ties is so important, and the little things makes a huge difference. Right. And I think the, uh, the way the engineers told me the last ten years, uh, they have this practice of ductile design, and um, I think they also have a fairly good redundancy to it. They have a lot of beams and columns, good moment frame systems. And one engineer was telling me to, uh, they tried to eliminate any irregular uh, you know, conditions and so on. So it's, yeah. uh, I, I think it, it helped. I remember when I wrote about the school collapses in uh, Sichuan province, uh, the, the ductile details yeah. were the thing. The, the, uh, those, the wrapped pieces have to be bent back, right? Around, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, around the yeah, vehicles. And in a lot, yeah, in a lot of cases, that wasn't done properly. That kind of thing. Yeah, we're, we're going to look into school construction more here. So let's see how how it goes. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll know more about it in the next uh, next couple couple weeks. Given what you've heard about the the numbers of buildings that collapsed out in the countryside and the general outcomes you find in, in quakes of this sort, do you think there's some credibility to Max uh, Weiss's um, calculation of at least a couple, you know, 20, he's in the sort well, he said his, his mid-range thing was 50,000 fatalities, uh, which, and, and Dolan said, well, you know, probably a factor of two up or down, and so they're saying like, you know, so 25,000, 50,000 deaths. Does that strike you as sort of beyond the pale or a reasonable prospect? I don't know. In, uh, I mean, difference, be, like a, this, this earthquake kind of reminds me a lot of a Sichuan, earth, uh, Sichuan earthquake in 2008, uh, in, in a sense, you know, kind of similar, similar kind of setups and constructions and so on. But Sichuan, we lost about, I think, estimated to be 80,000, 100,000 people, I believe, something like that. Mm -hmm. But that's a much bigger area, though. I mean, it's a huge density. I mean, uh, small town had like, uh, you know, 10 million people <laughs> in a Sichuan yeah. province. And uh, it's a totally different scale here. I mean, uh, it's like a tenth of a size almost, you know, yeah. as far as the population density is concerned. So I'm not so sure about 50,000 people. You know, that seems a big number. Yeah. And I think government estimated about 10,000. I think that's, it's, I got a feeling it's something like that. And uh, USGS forecast, uh, they forecast about 34% 30, probability of 10,000 people in the first day, actually. And that may end up to the number, actually. Right, we'll I just see. I saw their uh, pager analysis. I linked to that in my piece too. Um, you know, the bottom line is uh, the numbers. 
in, in this particular quake, almost, I, well, I'm not saying they don't matter. It's very important, obviously, to the country and the people who died. But, but um, one thing that would be a shame would be if they failed to do what you were just talking about, build back better, because this isn't the last earthquake, right? Can you tell oh, me yeah. about I mean, uh, overarching vulnerability that still exists in that area? Oh, yeah. I mean, Kat, Kathmandu is essentially got lucky, you know. I mean, if this earthquake was not 50 miles away, if it is 10 miles away, you're going to see totally different things here. I mean, I mean, this city is a danger, just no doubt about it. Yeah. It's just a full of the non-ductile uh, concrete and also unreinforced masonry brick, red brick construction. Right. And uh, many are old. It just the uh, the waiting for just actually bigger disaster, and that really concerns me. And um, it concerns me that the, hey, you know, Kathmandu's okay. It was not okay, and uh, it just uh, happened to be far distance earthquake. And even some of the uh, uh, aftershocks may actually cause the bigger bigger damage here. So that, I think that's something we should be really careful about. Interesting. So uh, well, how long are you going to be there? I don't know. Two uh, missions finished. <laughs> wow. I mean, uh, do you have a family life? I have a family life, but uh, it's uh, you know it's something got to do. I mean, there is no like an organized assessment here started yet, and uh, just public needs it. I mean, public needs to hear the credible engineers to tell them what it's a safe or unsafe, right. or why safe, why not, why unsafe. You know, they need to know. And uh, so that's what we've been trying to help for both uh, just individual basis to government. The uh, US Embassy asked me to look into many hospitals. So that's what we're doing today and tomorrow. Yeah, vital services and all that. Is there power? Yeah, yeah it came back. It just came back uh, uh, yesterday. So it's, uh, it's getting normalized quite a bit now. But yet, it's uh, walking through the Kathmandu is pretty, it's pretty eerie sight because uh, all the uh, businesses are. Uh, you know, closed. You know, there's no one in the street. Yeah. Very few people in the street. So it's just a weird feeling, you know, always in a disaster. And a disaster is always uh, such a tragic too. You know, this uh, this high rise building, it's a it's a complex of about six buildings, about twenty story buildings. It's a modern construction, it's heavily damaged because of the uh, this a shaking. And it's most likely uh, not feasible to repair back. And um, uh, there's a little house next to this, and this lady sitting right in front of this house. And she looked at me. I was doing a hard head, so she, she was I'm an engineer. And she asked me, is that safe to go back to my house? She got a little nice house there. And uh, obviously I had to tell her no, because you got the big building right next to you just cracking up and almost going to fall off you. It's sad, you know, and then uh, she asked me, you know, when, when I can I go back? Well, you know, the, this, this owner had to take this building down or aftershocks have to be leased to kind of terminate it and she asked me how long it's going to be well probably a year you know it's it's a hard thing to say to her but it's just uh tragic you know that's a yeah. disaster always like that it's really unbelievable. Uh, i wanted to ask you one one quick question about haiti where you spent so much time when, when i reported on that uh, you know i never got to go there we had other reporters who were on the ground but a seismologist I talked to said uh, th that was another place where they're worried that people might get complacent about the next one because there is the, another part of Port-au-Prince uh, that could still be devastated and the, the seismological picture would look pretty bad. Is, is that, what's just, can you give me a thumbnail of where things stand there? Well, the uh, reconstruction is almost done. I mean, if you go today, you're going to see very little, say, scar from a 2010 earthquake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for example, uh, with the USID, we, we uh, repaired about 12,000 houses. And after that, actually, the commercial sector picked up. And they actually uh, copy our methodologies, which is great, right? And they rebuilt about 120,000 so-called yellow tag houses. Yeah. I really thought it's so cool. It's really the built back better, in a sense, the uh, and uh, uh, commercially sustainable way. So today, if you walk through the uh, even per part of a couple of prints, you're gonna see ductile details. By the way, you know you're gonna see this this 135 degree, degree work. That's the important. Right. And um, so that's definitely changed. And uh, I think commercial sector, private sector, definitely serious about risk management. Today, yet uh, you know, if they do any kind of commercial buildings, they ask for peer review. 
they peer review their engineering and uh, supervision construction. They're very serious. And uh, I think that's, I think port of prince people see that seismic risk is a serious thing. And they see that the really the, uh, well, it could be big or it could happen again because that uh, fault line just zip, zip through right behind them. Right. You know, and the last earthquake is uh, almost uh, 10 miles out. So it's, uh, it was, could it be much closer too, actually, you know. So that, that's something the, uh, that's there. But uh, the island is really dangerous. I mean, yeah. there's a history of a back-to-back -back earthquake especially going to northern Capetian. It's a definitely the uh, uh, untouched uh, territory and a place that so-called construction practice never improved up there because just the knowledge in the port Prince never been transferred out to. So there's some certain effort by people like UNDP and so on to uh, do risk assessment, which we're doing right now, and see how, how we can do something out there. Hmm. All right, well, we'll follow up on that. But good luck with your trip and... Um Stay yeah. as safe as you can, and, and and do check back in with me if you see anything interesting. I sure will. Now, I definitely do see interesting things, and I'm leaving a crazy place from a border prince to Kathmandu now. So. Amazing. <laughs> All right, be well. And I do have a life. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.